Today, we're going to be talking about why it's so great to have a grant. What's so great about grants? What is a grantor retained annuity trust, a grant? Well, a grant is a tool that's used by people who want to reduce their estate and gift taxes on assets that they own. It's a trust that holds assets and if implemented correctly, shields the assets growth from transfer tax. A grant consists of assets that you contribute to the trust and an annuity that's paid to you as the grantor over a period of time for a specific number of years, each year on an annual basis. So the annuity comes out of the grant, gets paid to you, and then what's left over goes to the kids or to the named beneficiaries. What's a grantor and what's a grantor trust? Well, all trusts have a grantor. Grantors are the individuals who create and fund the trust. They put the assets in the trust. Although all trusts have a grantor, not all trusts are grantor trusts, which refers to the fact that the grantor, not the trust, pays income tax on the trust's income. When you set up the trust, the grantor makes an irrevocable transfer to the trust with a named beneficiary. At the end of the grant term, what's left over goes to the named beneficiaries. The amount that gets paid back to the grantor is known as an annuity, and it gets paid out for a period of years based on the fair market value of the assets that were contributed to the trust. The annuity is determined by using the IRS's 7520 rate, which was 5% in March of 2024. A grantor trust differs from a non-grantor trust. Non-grantor trusts pay tax on their income or distribute the income out to the beneficiaries and they pay the tax. What happens if a grantor dies with a grant annuity that hasn't been paid out yet? In other words, there's still time left on the grant term. Well, this is commonly referred to as mortality risk and it's a potential downside of a grant. If the grantor dies before the trust term ends, all the remaining assets are going to be included in the grantor's estate, and it defeats the primary purpose of the grant, which is shielding the asset growth from estate tax. How do I know if I should use a grant in my estate plan? Well, we know that grants work best when your estate exceeds or is expected to grow and exceed the estate tax exemption, which is pretty high in 2024. It also is indicated if you have high growth assets that will leave something to the beneficiaries because the growth exceeds the 75-20 rate. But you've gotta be careful in using grants because you don't wanna put in an asset that may be subject to a decline in value and therefore there's a high risk of loss. You also don't want to use a grant if there's a risk of high risk that you're going to pass away during the grant term, which is why we use a lot of short-term grants today. What's a zeroed out grant? Well, when you contribute assets to a grant, you're making a gift that may be subject to gift tax or can reduce your lifetime gift tax exemption. The value of the gift equals the fair market value of the assets that are contributed to the grant minus the value of the annuity payments that are due over the grant term. If the annuity is large enough, you can completely zero out the gift. This, this means that your grant beneficiary can receive the remaining trust assets free of estate and gift tax. In a zeroed out grant, the annuity has to equal or exceed the fair market value of the assets that you're putting into the grant. This means that the beneficiaries will inherit the assets appreciation at the end of the grant term. If the assets grow at a rate higher than the 75-20 rate, again, 5% in 2024, there will be assets to pass on to the beneficiaries. Can we be sure that a zeroed out GRAT or a short-term GRAT will exist forever? Well, no. I mean, legislative attacks have been targeted at GRATs for decades. And in recent years, there was a recent attempt by the House Ways and Means Committee to do away with GRATs and all grantor trusts. In fact, the committee proposed a minimum required grant length 
of at least 10 years and limitations on zeroed out grants and all other grant or trusts. Fortunately, these proposals were not passed by the House of Representatives. If the grant has illiquid assets, where do you get the annuity payments from? Well, they can be made with illiquid assets. So let's say you put in some pre-IPO stock into your grant. And you don't want to liquidate the stock because you believe it's currently undervalued. So in the absence of cash in the trust, the grant can use the shares to pay off the grant annuity. Next question is, when will the grant beneficiaries receive their assets? Well, in two ways. Number one, on the earlier of the death of the grantor, which is not a good fact pattern, or at the expiration of the trust, unless you want to keep those assets in trust for the beneficiaries so that it stays in trust after the beneficiaries are entitled to receive it. How do I protect against mortality risk? Well, we use rolling grats to accomplish this purpose. In connection with zeroed out grats, these short-term grats lower mortality risk because they expire in a very short period of time and they can lock in the estate tax savings for the appreciation during that short term. I've written about this in my book, Your Multi-Million Dollar Exit. And here's a quote from the book. And if you want to read more about it, check out the book at pages 169 and 170. I appreciate your listening to Blueprint for Wealth. Have a great week.